creating a plan for your detailed image, creating thumbnails, creating tonal roughs is nothing new. If you look at Creative Illustration by Andrew Loomis or any other comparable how to make good images book, you'll find that these ideas are covered in detail. But did you know you can also start to build a lot of those muscles for making great illustrations and thinking about tonal layouts, composition, and just organizing your vague mental images into an effective image on the page. You can do all of those things even when you're tackling very simple images and even if you're just planning your sketches. What I want to do in this video is discuss both how you ideate and come up with different sketches for different illustrations, even if they're simple illustrations, and also how does that process work when you've done a bunch of thumbnails? How do you translate them into you know the next phase? even if that's just a sketch, even if that's just a drawing. All right, welcome to the Drawing Codex. My name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing, and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. Now, if you'd like to learn more about line and color illustration, you can check out my free quick start guide. It's aimed to get you up and running quickly with the line and color style in Photoshop. You will learn how to create your own simple, reliable process. And I go over my thoughts on going from the thumbnail to the finished image. And you get all of the brushes and PSDs that I tend to use day in, day out. This is the same process and technique that I use on most of my work, including all of the comics and concept art and illustration that I do. The link will be in the description. It's free, go check it out. Figuring out how to get the ideas from your head onto the page is one of the major challenges as an artist, right? There's obviously technique, there's illustration theory. There's a lot of these elements that we're putting together to do that. But the main sort of challenge that we have is that we have an idea or well, someone else has an idea and we need to make it real. We need to put it down onto the page. Now, I think one of the big challenges also is that the sort of complexity of making a really, really finished image is immense. There's so many elements that go towards making it good. We have to think about illustration theory, um, composition, tonal layouts, color theory. We need to think about a lot of the sort of ideas, the narrative, like why does anyone care about this? What am I actually doing? What is that idea in my head? Not just how do I turn it into a, an image, but you know, is it any good to begin with? Then we've got craft, perspective, rendering, your shadows, your shading, all of that stuff that is on the technical side of things. And then we've got the practice, the actual application of that your every stroke that you put down and your ability to kind of translate all of that stuff into you being an artist, your style, all of those subtleties. There's a lot going on. And I think one of the best things you can do that really sort of helps you to sort of understand how this works is to practice doing some of the same mental gymnastics that you have to do when you are tackling those larger images you know, every day so that you're sort of practicing those things all day, every day and sort of getting comfortable with them, comfortable with the idea of, again, sort of ideating and coming up with thumbnails and sort of drawing small, because that's where you can really let the creativity flow, where you can sort of imagine anything and iterate and feel like, you know, what you're doing is both important, but not important, important because this is where the idea comes together, but not important because this one that you're doing right now can easily be thrown away for another quick thumbnail, another quick sketch. You're not attached as much to any of these ideas. And I think that detachment allows the creative process and the flow to happen a lot easier. You're in a much better place to iterate and ideate and be less attached to ideas if you're just thumbnailing and sketching and kind of messing around and you're not really attached to any of these ideas. The other side of that is that when you actually go to, you know, take a thumbnail and make it into a finished image, that is a big challenge for a lot of us. And it takes a long time to learn how you're going to do that. 
And if you're only doing it with big illustrations, then it can be a real challenge. But I really think you can learn a lot of the stuff that you need to learn just by doing very simple, simple illustrations, just of simple objects or simple little, you know, very simple scenes, or even just kind of a character or even just a portrait, just kind of heads. The difference is, again, if you're just sketching around in your sketchbook and drawing heads from different angles and stuff, you're exercising a slightly different muscle than if you have to take a thumbnail that exists of a particular head that has some compositional elements to it, that has maybe a tonal layout to it that's planned. And you then have to sort of say, well, okay, how do I take that and make it into something more detailed? Now, that's often the same challenge that you have with sort of, you know, taking any thumbnail and making it big. But if you can do it simpler and you can even do it with your sketches and rougher drawings, you're going to do it a lot more often. And the more often you do it, the more you're going to be able to practice it, the more you practice it, the better you're going to get at it. That's the simple idea here. The other thing to consider is that a lot of people make entire careers just out of, you know, drawing very simple characters and pinup illustrations or simple objects, but making them really, really nicely done, adding a huge amount of illustrative quality to simple images and simple things. So this is where, again, you can consider, you know, the lighting, the angle, the specific mood that you have to be a major part of how you make an image good. And the more you can plan that and the more sort of confident you can be in the fact that if you have drawn a little version, you can turn it into a real one, the better you're going to get overall at applying those same concepts to a more detailed image. So I think this is a really, really important, fun thing that can unlock a lot of creativity and it can also help you avoid falling into a few ruts, a few bad habits where maybe you just sit down, you don't quite know what to draw, but you kind of just start drawing anyway. And again, maybe you just sort of pick the same angle, the same gesture, the same type of character, and you're not kind of pushing yourself enough. I think that planning your image and you know having to make something is it's a really good way for you to push your craft to focus on you know how you actually make that happen and I think that you know creative separation between those things is something that's really important to allow you to focus on the task at hand anyway let's jump over to the drawing table and we'll sort of dive into these topics in a little bit more depth I'll show you some of my sketches how I've done this in the past and we'll also just you know look at a few examples of people taking thumbnails and turning them into finished images all right here we are at the drawing table now firstly I just want to sort of share with you some examples that I think illustrate how powerful and useful sketching can be as a way to plan images. Now, I like to use Frazetta, Frank Frazetta, as a good example of this because often when we sort of see his work, it feels very dynamic and it feels very sort of fluid and spontaneous. And again, a lot of people sort of assumed that this was something that was just kind of done uh, on the fly, right, that there were no sketches. But, uh, you know, as you can see from uh, a lot of the sort of sketchbooks that, you know, have sort of come up and, you know, people sort of sharing his uh, process, you know, and getting a hold of that, you, you can really see that most of these images were, you know, very, very solidly planned, right? And I think what we can sort of assume is that for most of these illustrations, as loose and fluid and dynamic as they might be, there, there probably was a pretty, pretty accurate sort of little version of that somewhere along the way. These are often in color, um, although, you know, often just, you know, quick sketches and, and uh, you know, pencil drawings were working as well. But again, really, really good example of how you know, really the whole thing is there at this little sort of stage. And again, it really is this kind of idea that, uh, you know, got me really interested in the idea of sort of doing sketches. And again, the importance that they can play in creating really sort of spontaneous work. Now, again, I've made videos in the past talking about thumbnailing, but, uh, you know, I really, really think this is something that often can maybe feel a little bit stifling in the beginning, but truly is where you can be the most creative. 
Uh, here you can see again, there's like, you know, exploration of, you know, just the subject matter at hand, how you could sort of place it. Um, just kind of doing little drawings to sort of explore those things before, you know, that sort of finished thumbnail comes together. And uh, again, I think it's that sort of process that is as important as everything else, right? Again, these kind of little thought processes here that, uh, you know, you can actually see got turned into quite a few different images. But um, yeah, super interesting to see. And, and again, something that, you know, a lot of people assumed was, you know, always something where he was just fluidly doing it. But in most cases, all of these kind of big images that he's done um, come from, you know, sort of thumbnails, right? So again, you can see there's a, I think that one was in that sort of previous book. And you can see the translation there is sort of pretty, pretty direct. Again, here's another one. Again, just sort of showing that process. So hopefully that gives you an idea for, again, how, you know, this can play into it. And I think it is almost that sort of the dichotomy here for me is that, you know, even the most fluid artists can utilize thumbnails. And, and I would say it's also possible that he was able to get that level of fluidity, right? That mix of kind of solidarity, good composition, um, you know, all of those things working, but still make the finish feel very loose and artistic because he planned them so well, because for every image that sort of felt resolved, even though it is quite sketchy, there was a little version of it that basically was a map for how to get there. As with a lot of things, I think the best way to improve on most of your artistic skills is just to practice because in many ways, the skill that you're trying to perfect is your ability to turn your image in your head onto something real on the page. And that's a little bit mystical, but that doesn't mean to say that there's not a lot of theory or intellectual sort of knowledge that we can apply. So if we look at something like creative illustration, you can see that, um, you know, there's a lot of thought put into the ideas behind what makes images interesting, how we can draw the eye, how we can, um, you know, basically make something that, you know, tells our story, but will also engage the viewer. Now, I'm not a huge fan of these things being sort of considered as rules. And I think that often the real danger is that people read these and it kind of seems like, okay, this is sort of what I've got to follow. I think the best way, if you actually read these books, which again is my sort of recommendation, is not just to sort of look at a few pictures or, or whatever, or, or sort of, you know, if you sort of Google a few things, you kind of see a few pages and it's like, wow, like the amount of information in there is really high. It's a really high concentration of good ideas. Um, if you read the book, I think you'll find that most artists who write these type of books are kind of saying, hey, these are just ideas. These are just tools. I can't really teach you how to be a good illustrator, but but here's what I can teach you, right? Here's some interesting ideas. And it's, it's important to take them into context. The majority of the way that you will sort of be able to make these things work for you is to practice on your own, which again is what we're going to talk about mostly in this video. But with that said, there are, uh, you know, a huge number of abstract concepts that you can sort of play with here. And once you really get your own practice and ritual for including thumbnails in your work, even your sort of rougher work, that's when I think you can start to kind of read these books in more detail and really, really start to analyze the concepts of composition and how you can use them in your work, right? Because again, all composition, right? All illustration or good picture making theory really is about analyzing images that have been created to a certain degree. Now, if you read thoroughly through this type of book, what you'll find is, again, there's a lot of good example for how you can sort of use something, again, like sort of informal subdivision, maybe to kind of, you know, as a part of the creative process. But, but in most cases, compositional rules are analyzing stuff that's already been created. Or, again, you know, in this case is, is sort of, you know, dealing with maybe, you know, abstract imagery or this artist has figured out a way to kind of make that work with their process. And I found for myself, the challenge is always that when I'm doing it, 
it's different to this. It's not as abstract because I have these ideas in my head. So the real trick is to figure out how to fit this stuff into your process. And again, as I always recommend, the best way to do that is to actually have a process that you're using to make it regular and then to sort of feed these abstractions and ideas into that sort of daily or weekly practice, whatever it is for you, and use that as a way to, again, sort of build your skills. It's very hard to kind of read a book like this and gain any knowledge from it. You need to be feeding it into your actual practice um, day in, day out. But um, I still think that this is one of the best books written on illustration. I think that, you know, uh, there's a great number of uh, amazing illustration courses and things that you can get there. But if, you, if you're talking about like books, um, this is definitely one of the best and has a lot of really, really good um, advice for, you know, every sort of stage of the illustrative process. It talks about sort of tonal um, sort of plans and, and, and a lot of really, really basic stuff that could be very useful. But again, um, a, a lot of what this book is talking about is that planning. And again, that's why I think the planning is so important. Another really great example that I often like to highlight is the use of thumbnailing in comic books. Again, this is something that I'll share with you in a little bit, talking about how I use it for my books. But, you know, one of the best examples I, you know, sort of found of this is, again, the development work by uh, Guarnido for Black Sad. And, yeah, in this case, I think that, you know, Again, we have this sort of amazing mix of, you know, development work and, and sort of coming up with different ideas, both from a lighting perspective and a composition, compositional perspective. And this is one of the things that's hardest to get your head around when you're really beginning your journey as an illustrator is how this stuff, um, you know, is sort of actually used by the artist again. Every artist is going to use this to a certain degree. Um, I feel like, uh, you know, in this case, there's a crazy amount of preparation that seems to be sort of involved in creating these images. But if you've seen the Black Sad books, which again might be like a you know separate video, we could sort of maybe look at that. But again, you know, the the art in these is often considered to be you know like some of the best really ever created in, uh, you know, the sort of a bon dessiné sort of comic world, right? And there's a reason that it looks that good. It's planned and it's really nicely planned. And uh, again, it's that sort of planning, I think, that helps, um, you know, that sort of fluidity and mix of solidarity and fluidity to kind of come to the finished image. But one thing I'll say is you can really see there there is like a there is like a level of detail that's very consistent with these that maybe the artist has sort of developed. I certainly found that with my work is that the idea of drawing small and developing a shorthand style and process and technique and what medium you use to do it um, is almost like, again, you're, you're practicing drawing in a different style, right? A much sort of simpler, quicker style than maybe the one that you're going to use in your sort of finished work. So anyway, I think like this is always a great example of just, uh, you know, the degree to which you might want to put a lot of that sort of preparation work into your own work, right? And again, if you do want those real high quality results, often you need to do a lot of planning. Just quickly, I did mention that one of the things that's worth considering is that a lot of artists find quite a lot of success just drawing relatively simple subject matter, but adding a huge amount of illustrative flair and style and interest. And that you can also practice a lot of the you know fundamental concepts that you might see in you know creative illustration or any of those other books by taking on, again, a, a simple subject that might be comfortable to you. Again, just drawing female face, female torso. Um, Lois, again, is, is an amazing artist who I think does, you know, one of the best jobs of this. And really, again, it is just a matter of, you know, taking simple subject matter. And again, I say simple because um, we're just dealing with, again, face plus maybe one object. So when I sort of talk about creating a simple illustration, I, I'm not sort of saying simple in terms of 
um, low quality or, or anything like that. What I mean is that we're not necessarily drawing massive scenes, massive backgrounds, and what you can sort of you know tell is that it's very easy to really move people and create amazing art, even through just tackling character plus abstract background, again, just sort of colored, plus one or two sort of different objects, um, one or two different uh, sort of subjects. And again, that's, uh, you know, a, a lot of what, uh, you know, people do these days with those kind of, um, again, sort of more sort of abstract, um, you know, simpler sort of images. But again, you can learn and practice a huge amount of illustration just by doing this. And again, I think most people know of uh, Loish, so I think she's a, a really, really great example an amazing artist who does a does a really really good job of that. Sometimes again, um, you know, just completely blows me away how much she manages to get and make the image feel like it's kind of moving and coming at you, and it's this kind of amazing set of colors and vibrancy. And and then you kind of think about what it is, and it's like, oh, it's just a girl with hair, right? And that's it. It's just a girl with flowers. It's just a girl with fish. But again, the trick is to make it really really good i can also share with you a few examples from my sketchbooks that you know go over the thumbnailing process for some of the comics that i've done and i shared a few of these previously but this is typically how i would go about sort of planning a page it would be a mix of thinking about the script um, in this case, written by David Chevelle, based on the, you know, sort of traditional tale by Carlo Collodi of Pinocchio. And, you know, we have a mix of little sort of thumbnail sketches that only I understand. And we also have a lot of, um, you know, sort of explorations of what particular panels might look like. The ones that might need to be more illustrative or important. So again, here you can see this is... Let's bring this over here. This sketchbook is completely, completely trashed. Um, but yeah, so here you can see again, this is the idea, a uh, little sort of thumbnail. There might have been sort of a few different takes on it, a few different ideas for kind of how that might work. But yeah, there were mostly panels that I would know how to draw, right? That's just Pinocchio, that's just a bird. And then there's the sort of takeoff shot right then they're flying and again the idea was to kind of try and figure out how that might work and then there's the one where he sort of has to get off the bird so again thinking about that sort of sequence here you can see again this panel here um uh, i think uh, again sort of based on this one here so again you know a mix of different sort of styles and techniques and processes that you can use now you can see my sort of process for doing this is uh, nowhere near as complicated as you know the the artist on black sad is in you know and the amount of sort of effort that they they put into the planning um again you know my sort of entire approach to this is is a little bit sort of rougher um and uh, yeah, you know, I just don't have that sort of patience to keep doing those. But again, um, you know, I sort of know that where I need to plan the drawings more, they will often benefit from that. So here we've got a couple of different ones. Here we've got sort of a 55. I don't know how much that is this page here, right? So we can see this one, get that over here, bang, yeah, there we go. So we can see this page here is a pretty good representation of this page here. So, you know, thumbnailing for comics is its own particular um, thing, right? It, it really needs to be exactly suited to your particular style and, and figure out sort of exactly what you need. There's a lot of different ways to do this, I guess, is my point. Um, you don't have to always be creating a color version of the page that you need. It's all a matter of you developing exactly what you need to plan your image. All right, so hopefully those give you a little bit of context, right? Again, there's lots of different options here. There's no such thing as this is the way to thumbnail. This is the way to do it. A huge range of different um, degrees to which you can plan an image. 
Now, this is, you know, one of the ways that I have used it. And again, one of the main things I want to talk about in this video, I will make a subsequent video talking about sort of how we really use this for planning complicated scenes. And again, that's one of the things that I sort of have done here to a certain degree is that I would do little thumbnails for these uh, sort of scenes or, or different sort of little illustrations. Again, I would sort of, you know, class this as a, you know, it's it's like a medium compl complex image, right? We have like characters, maybe multiple characters. We have, um, you know, like a separate objects. We've got ground planes, backgrounds, etc. Um, it's not like, you know, we have sort of crowd scenes or, you know, it's like the most complicated image you can create. But again, you know, the idea here is we're sort of trying to create a little bit of a world. And, you know, I would spend quite a bit of time just sort of planning these images and, and doing these kind of things. Um, people are often talking about uh, doing like sketchbook um, sort of flip through things and I, I'll, I'll figure out a way to do that. The problem is... Um, Again, half of the work in this book is uh, is sort of freelance, right? So these things here, are, you know, from you know many many years ago, but but they're sort of all meant to sort of be NDA. So my my sketchbooks tend to be like, yeah, I, I don't separate them into personal and professional sort of stuff. But again, here you can see typically how I'm approaching this. Uh, I'm doing a mix of, um, you know sort of playing around with the same idea, right? Exploring that, figuring out like what I need to do to, you know, really sort of build this world. You know, the, these are all based on dragons, right? So a lot of these are, again, ideas that have dragons in them, right? We have some sort of dragon hunters sort of ideas here. And you, you can see there's a couple, if you pay attention, that have actually been made into uh, illustrations that you can sort of see on my art station. I think this one, there is one that sort of got made into something and I think this one as well was like sort of pretty close although I think I changed the dragon in that one. So just playing and exploring with ideas what would be an interesting illustration from you know mostly just from an abstract point of view and again one of the things that I would do is then take those little ideas and use them to you know be the basis for my sketches. And I found that this process in general was, you know, very, very useful. So again, you sort of had this idea for an image, right? And that gets turned into this. Now, whether or not you consider this to be a sketch or not, I think a lot of that just has to do with, again, what you're trying to achieve with your sketches. So for me, what I sort of found is that if I look at my sort of efforts going into working in a sketchbook and, and playing around, is that, you know, if I do focus on sort of, you know, doing a little sketch, again, this feels very creative. I have lots of possibility. I can sort of do anything I want. Um, but uh, again, I, I'm not sort of just messing around, right? Sort of drawing random things, right? This sketchbook that we sort of saw before was a little bit more like that, right? Where I'm just kind of drawing stuff, right? right? Like there's just, there's just like sort of stuff here, right? Here's some sort of ideas for dragons and just sort of playing around. Again, I feel like that's one way of sketching. But again, what I found is that structuring it a little bit more allowed me to focus more on the process of illustration and the process of, again, trying to fill the page with something to, to consider that from a compositional standpoint. And again, these would be the you know same sort of idea now this is really more where i want to sort of talk about um these ideas the in this video is that again in the same way that an artist like loish can make a lot out of a simple image i think one of the best things you can do is to do the same is to start with whatever is sort of comfortable to you whatever is something that you in really enjoy drawing and you know to reduce that complexity to a point where you're going to have a good chance of completing an image in a reasonable amount of time um, and to sort of plan for those level of complexity images. Now, again, one of the things here, these are all just sort of faces. So, you know, a lot of us, you know, grow up drawing faces in our sketchbooks, right? And this is where all I'm doing is just planning that face a little bit more and trying to make some more out of it. 
And again, what you've noticed is, you know, uh, an artist like Luis is, is much better than I am at getting that sort of full feeling of sort of spontaneity and, and illustration out of, you know, a, a simple kind of face. And there's lots of things that, again, you know, I would sort of try and learn from different artists like that about how to create more with, with less and really sort of focus on the illustrative quality there. One of the things that I found is I'm probably you know, it's a little bit easier for me to draw more stuff because I have a background in comics. So um, I found that that's typically what people respond to more is, you know, again, when I'm drawing scenes as opposed to when I'm sort of trying to draw detailed faces. But um, either way, this is exactly the sort of process that I would sort of take, right, is, um, you know, in, in some cases, again, I'll do a separate video that talks about the process for how you would thumbnail out more of a complicated scene like this. But uh, again, hopefully this gives you a little bit of an overview for kind of how I have used this. I think for this video, what I really, really want to do is just do a sort of demonstration talking about how we can try and design um, using as much illustration as we can, as, as many of those things that you might find in the creative illustration book and try and, you know, thumbnail out some ideas that really, really feel like they're dynamic or they're pushing those illustrative qualities, but dealing with whatever subject matter you like. So in this case, I'll pick something that, you know, I'm very sort of comfortable drawing. It'll just be some sort of elf girl fantasy stuff. But again, what we'll focus on is how do we make that interesting? All right, so let's give this a go. Now, Firstly, I'll say a few things. I'm going to sort of, normally I do this in a sketchbook because I find it's easier to collect the ideas over time. Um, loose pizza paper often gets sort of lost, but I feel like this is probably going to be the best way for us to do this. So the tools are a black wing pencil and some copy paper. Again, I, I find it really useful to, you know, get this sort of smaller size copy paper because you can just use it for notes and little sketches and all sorts of stuff like that. Um... What I'm going to focus on here is just the process of getting into the habit of drawing your drawings small and then taking them and making them bigger. Um, I'm not going to talk about any of those abstract illustrative qualities. What I'm really trying to get across is like, what are the feelings that you have? What are the feelings that I have here? And how do we sort of translate that to a little sketch and get that to work? Once you really get the ha into the habit of this, that's when you can start to think about, well, okay, how do I make a good image? And again, there's a couple of really sort of good exercises that I find are sort of useful here. One is to just, again, pick something that you really like. Again, for me, I'm just going to sort of pick a sort of standard, um, again, sort of female portrait sort of pinup character. Uh, again, very similar to that, uh, you know, the sort of work that someone like Loish would um, would do. Uh Again, I, I think, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of people who get so, so good at this. Um, this is not really my specialty, but it's something that I, I kind of like doing, right? And again, I think it's a good example. So in this case, what we're sort of doing is is dealing with how do we make this sort of interesting? And, and how do I sort of get the feeling that I want while also... Um, you know, maybe also, you know, stepping outside my comfort zone a little bit if I want. But with all of these things, I think the most important concept to get your head around here is that you really want to make sure you get your sort of intent right as you go in. What one, one intent might be make a great image. Another might be push past your sort of typical subject matter or, or, or sort of comfort zone. No matter what it is, it's really vital that we sort of, you know, write that down and make sure we stick to that basic idea. It's so easy to get, especially if you're looking at other artists and, you know, you're kind of like, oh, you know, maybe I could do this, maybe I could do that. Um, yeah, it's so easy to get sidetracked and forget kind of what you're trying to do, especially if you are in this kind of idea space. Because again, there's so many different options, there's so many different things that, that you could do. And the question is kind of like, what should I do now, right? What is actually going to make this work? 
um, for this image. So I'm really just going to focus on how we can frame the character because that's a good way for me to demonstrate this idea. Uh, but again, there's a million different things you could do, such as again, I'm going to get you know better at sort of doing portraits right from a sort of side view, right? So again, in that case, what you're doing is is you know you might just do 20 thumbnails where you just draw different sort of portraits and just play around with it, right? And see how you can kind of frame. Maybe again, like what are the different elements that, you know, if I was going to draw elf girl portraits, right, um, from the side, right, that, that sort of side view. Again, what are the different elements that I could use to make that interesting, right? And how can I think about issues of composition, right, that might play into what makes this look good? Now, there's a couple of different ways you can thumbnail. One is to just sort of sketch around and then put a frame on it after. The other is to put the frame on first. There's no right or wrong, as you sort of see in, you know, a lot of these kind of books, right? Uh, you know, you can sort of look at sort of Frazetta's methodology and... You know, it, it's often a real kind of miss, uh, sort of mess, right? Of like, you know, thumbnails here, sketches here. And, and, and again, I think what you see is just the creative process at work. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but it also can be good to just, uh, you know, like have a, a, a sheet of thumbnail size images that are the right ratio that you want. If you're drawing a cover or, you know, maybe a, a good one is if you're trying to post stuff on Instagram, right? Uh, you know, you get the square there, or if you're trying to do something that, you know, goes on a different sort of modern phone, social media platform, you get the phone sort of format, you draw those boxes first, and then you try and compose into the box. Two completely different ways of working, and they will work your mind in different ways. One is kind of just ideating, and then you can frame it later. The other is where you're actually specifically trying to fit something into a box. And again, they're both really, really valuable, valid ways of working. But uh, again, get your intent right in the beginning and make sure you don't get frustrated if you're sort of trying to do one and then you sort of switch to doing the other. Or again, you just get those wires a little bit crossed. But uh, again, for this demo, I'm going to be drawing, again, standard uh, sort of elf girl um, fantasy character. And I'm going to think about how I'm going to make this interesting, how I can sort of change the angle maybe think about the different elements that might sort of go into this to make this interesting. And I'm going to use the thumbnailing process to ideate and hopefully come up with a more interesting idea than I normally would. <clears throat> All right, so let's uh, put that one to the side. Now, again, there's probably a, a number of different ways I could sort of play around with this. Uh, again, you know, framing it first, uh, I'm just going to sort of do, try and do this, you know, as my, right, as my sort of brain, um, at what, I'm just going to do whatever is natural, right? I'm not going to try and sort of force this too much. So again, like one of the first things you could kind of play around with would be the hair, right? Like maybe we could make the hair a little bit more interesting. Now, this is where, you know, the idea of ideation or, or sort of shape design can really be important and what that means is that again we're trying to design what looks good if we're in a structural point of view then it could be really good instead to kind of sh like move to something that's a little bit simpler right like we could again think about what are some sort of interesting shapes for hair to be uh, and it might be easier for us to do that if we are drawing much smaller. So in this case, again, what I might do is just sort of sketch really small instead of sketching big because or the idea of sort of playing around with different sort of hair is going to be a lot easier if I'm thinking about it at this stage. So again, what we can do is just play around with different sort of shapes that might work and yeah, the more that we just sort of flow with that and don't don't worry about 
you know, the drawing being sort of amazing. Again, just sort of keep them pretty small. The more we do that, the better. And again, you know, you could also, you know, find some sort of reference for this. Uh, that would probably be, you know, a good idea. Again, in my case, I'm often not. You know, uh, my, my sort of hair game is not as good as it could be. But yeah, you know, here again, just kind of thinking about, you know, how we might play around with those kind of ideas. And again, it's just a matter of sort of thinking through it. What are you, like, what, what feelings are you trying to achieve here? Uh, that, that to me is often the, right, the most important thing to pay attention to. What, what are the feelings or emotions that you're, right, is it complexity, is it simplicity, right? Simplicity might deal with sort of much simpler shapes. Uh, you know, complexity might have, uh, again, you know, a lot of these different bits and pieces going on, right? We might want something, again, sort of really complex. So we could think about it from a design standpoint. We're just sketching through, like, how can I make that interesting? Um, and again, we can sort of translate that to a, again, like a more sort of finished drawing. And again, this doesn't have to be you know, thinking about composition necessarily. This can just be sort of drawing small, playing around. Um, and again, you could, uh, right, we could just think about, okay, let's try, you know, sort of straight hair versus big hair, right? Like, how can we sort of make this interesting? Um, and think about the angle as well. And again, just sort of play around, right? Just think about how this might, how this might be something that is kind of worth, again, going with those kind of more animalistic sort of elf ears. All right, I could just try something this, right? See if we can get some sort of shapes going. So again, using the example of just kind of like drawing, warming up, trying to think about what's going on. I'm, I'm less worried about the ideas of, um, of composition here or like how this exactly sort of fits into anything in particular. And again, these don't have to be necessarily like good characters. Right, we can make them right, sort of whatever type of character we want. So yeah, just play around and then think about, again, how could we maybe frame this to make it sort of interesting. And maybe again add some sort of depth so overlapping forms right here overlapping like the ear so this is where again like the things that I find that tend to work uh, that are sort of worth playing with at this real sort of simple scale are just ideas like overlapping shapes right so we can sort of show depth and, and make it feel potentially like less like just sort of like a boring portrait through considering, again, just simple overlapping shapes, right? So I've got hair here, right? And this is overlapping the face. I've got hair on the other side, that's kind of overlapping there. I've then sort of got this hair and I've got some hair going behind the ear, right? The ear is going, right, sort of in front of there, boom. And Right, then we can sort of think about, oh, you know, maybe would it be darker here, lighter here? All right, what's going on? Again, do we want it lighter or darker up there? Again, you know, just play around, experiment. The the first few times you do this, right, it's not necessarily gonna gonna work that well. Um, you know, you're not necessarily gonna, you know, have some 
guaranteed success or or anything like that. Um, again, this is a this is a journey, right? Uh, and a lot of it is how do we kind of draw small, right? How do we plan? And part of that planning is is it's not just a matter of um, you know it's not just a matter of like planning. Um, it's it's not just a matter of the the planning being useful. It it's also that uh, or, or like that the the drawings have to be small or big or whatever. It it's the thought process that goes on as you do it, right? So. It's not just what you see, it's the things that you learn along the way that, that will sort of really help you. So again, just remember it's the it's the journey that you sort of go on here. You don't always have to come up with, again, something kind of amazing. Um, one idea will often lead to another. So again, you know, just thinking about how we could maybe frame, again, sort of simple shots How could we make this kind of interesting, right? So the other thing you can do is, you know, once you get, you know, if you're sort of like, well, you know, I, I don't want necessarily the challenge of just trying to make, you know, a single character interesting. You can think about, you know, what what could we do to add to this, right? What what can we sort of do to make this interesting from an idea standpoint? And again, I think there's there's different challenges that you can give yourself from a from a thumbnailing point of view um you know and one of them could just be that what you are trying to do is just practice your ability to draw very very simple basic things and, and work your sort of compositional skills another thing that you could try and do is to you know consider that you know a good another good way to make things interesting is to come up with an interesting idea right so it's not just a matter of uh, you know, interesting composition, that, but you can also, you know, often come up with interesting ideas that will sort of trump good composition. So in this case, we could, you know, potentially combine one subject matter with another and, you know, hope that this might lead us somewhere interesting. So that might be something, again, we sort of try next. But yeah, this is sort of what I would, you know, just sort of play around with, right? Like, can we can we make some some interesting shapes? Can we think about what would be light, what would be dark? Again, a little bit more geometric here. Just experiment. Um, one of the things that I do notice about this, and I've heard sort of other people say the same, is that you know often thumbnailing and thinking through um, an image is one of the hardest things to demo because your brain kind of turns off when you're doing this. It, it's it's a little bit more um, mentally taxing, let's say, than just kind of drawing fun stuff, right? When, when we're doing structure and that kind of stuff, or if you're, you know, rendering or, you know, doing what, some of those more sort of technical craft-based tasks, then, yeah, this can be a real situation where, uh, you know, you can kind of talk, you can turn off your brain a little bit. Um, but when we're, you know, when we're doing this, I feel like, yeah, it does require a lot of mental energy. You need to, you know, make sure you have time and space for it. Um, you don't want to be doing this when, you know, again, you're sort of completely worn out. And uh, if you're in concept design, one of the things we do is, yeah, often make sure you do your sketching, your ideating, your actual design, your thinking. Make sure you do that early in the day, right? And leave your kind of rendering and your noodling for later in the day, right? When, uh, again, it's not going to matter as much. But, uh, yeah, anyway, just sort of thinking through. And again, you know, we can just kind of keep placing these kind of ideas around. Now, again, you know, we might sort of play around with something a little bit different, right? We can 
Again, try the same sort of idea, but from a different different angle. And normally I do these a little bit smaller, but I am trying to make sure that they're kind of easy to see and that I, I'm doing them in a little bit more fidelity than I normally would as well. And that is because, otherwise I feel like it's, it's a little bit like you're just gonna be sitting there watching me draw really small, squiggly, kind of nothings, right? <laughs> Uh, so again, uh, it's one of these hard things to demonstrate, um, and I found that throughout my sort of drawing teaching, um, you know, experience and, and career. Again, this is one of those harder things to demonstrate because of all of these reasons. Because again, if I do it how I normally would actually do it, it's just kind of me looking at these kind of pointless little scribbly sketches and things, um, which kind of isn't isn't always what we what we kind of want, right? So again, you could try sort of just different, right? Different kind of angle. What can we what can we have there? Is that going to be interesting enough? Again, I, I don't know. Try different, different sort of shapes that we could play around with. And again, try and use some sense of kind of like depth or overlapping shapes. So to kind of help us there. Again, it's always going to be easiest to, you know, make stuff look interesting if we're sort of looking at, you know, at someone's, directly at someone's face, right? That's always probably going to produce the more kind of interesting sort of look, but you, you can sort of explore it um, and play around with sort of different, different ideas. And again, as I said, you could try and do these sort of smaller. A lot of it depends on what you're, right? What you're trying to practice, right? Like, what are you, what are you trying to work on? Is it is it the overall big shape? Is it like an actual sort of character design? What are you, what are you trying to do? And in this case, you can think about, right, just sort of framing, right? You could try some of those, you know, informal compositional sort of concepts, right? We could try and think about, again, there being a little bit more of that kind of flowing hair or something like that might be something to kind of play around with. Again, often just adding, you know, like a couple of little bits and pieces will, will really kind of help to get you get you in the right sort of frame of mind. Like, right, that might be interesting. Um, other things that we could try might again be to sort of combine a different element, right? So some hands, or um, again some sort of abstract element, right? We could try again something simple right we just have you know character again maybe we've got again some sort of fingers and again we could just have some sort of flowers or some sort of abstract sort of shapes, things that, again, what you can often do is just kind of imagine like, you know, we will figure out what these things are later. You know, a lot of the time, if you're just sort of sketching around, you can think about what what is going to look good from 
a compositional standpoint and just kind of flow with that, right? But again, um, I, I, I find that often the, uh, the rougher I keep these, right, the, the smaller I keep these, the easier it is because, again, it's, it's, it's easier in that instance to imagine what you're, what you're drawing to be sort of different, right, in the final, right? So the, the more vague the thumbnail is, sometimes the better that is because it allows you to, you know, not worry about the specifics quite so much. Right, and, and and worry a little bit more about again sort of what's right, what's what's happening. Right. So I can, you know, maybe get a little bit more like, oh yeah, maybe this is a finger, right? Maybe that's a kind of a hand, right? Maybe there's sort of something something interesting kind of happening. We have sort of some sense of right of movement, right, within the frame. Right. What is what is going on there? And uh, again, you know, you can solve those problems when it comes to the to the finished drawing potentially, right? That can, you know, maybe just be some way of coming up with, uh, again, you know, one of those sort of interesting, interesting ideas. And uh, you know, often we can get you know interesting results like that. So anyway, you know, hopefully I've given you uh, a few ideas. Again, what I might do is uh, um, we'll kind of leave this sort of quick demonstration of sort of coming up with different ideas here at this point. Um, but I might do some of the sort of ritual sketching sessions that I have on the channel. And maybe in those we'll just do, you know, maybe like an hour of thumbnailing and, and really sort of dig into what happens once you sort of get there. But hopefully this gives you sort of the, the basic idea for how this might work. What I'll do is we'll just sort of grab some paper and we'll talk about, again, you know, how we might sort of take this and use it to create one of those maybe sort of 20 to 30 minute sort of, you know, slightly more detailed drawing. So I'll take some Fabriano um, Artistico watercolor paper and we'll just sort of get stuck into it. So in this case, um, yeah, you know, let's try and um, again, there's different skills you can sort of build here. One would be that, again, you draw the frame first. Um, that might be something that's kind of useful. And, and I think that can be something that is, you know, will, will sort of help you get there um, and, and build those skills for like being able to translate a thumbnail to, um, to a finished image. So let's maybe look at that. Um, again, I'm just going to use a, a pretty sort of small Right, little kind of space here, and this might help me to just kind of frame that. All right, get that sort of right in there. So we've sort of got something eh, roughly like this. But again, if we um, if we need to go outside, it will be will be fine. And again, I've made that faint sort of for a reason. So again, in this case, right, we sort of got like a right a sort of a head up here. All right. All right, forehead, cheekbones. So the first thing that I'm going to do is try and sort of sort out some of the drawing structure. Um, and I'm just going to sort of see if I can use that composition, right? So here we've got, you know, a bit of sort of stuff floating around and we kind of have, right, we kind of have a hand that's over there. All right, boom. Boom. And then this other hand, right, is kind of like like that over here. So again, we'll figure out exactly what's happening with those. First step that I often find is is sort of like you know, useful is just kind of get it in there, right? Uh, do it lightly. Again, this is one of those things that you know is, is often very frustrating because it's super hard to see what is going on here. But yeah, you got to do this lightly. There's there's no other sort of way around it. Um, so again, the, the idea again, like you know, I like that kind of idea that maybe there's kind of this sort of stuff growing, right? There's like a magical sort of thing here. I didn't really know what you know what those were. 
um, right the the kind of bubbles or like I was like maybe it could be a flower coming off but I like that it's kind of again maybe it's kind of petals or something like that and it's right it's sort of growing on her arm again just sort of weird sort of fantasy sort of stuff um, right and and again that the trick for me here is to really really separate out the sort of structural drawing from the character drawing right so again if, if we sort of like want some structure to this right some sort of plan I think uh, again something that I always sort of uh, focus on right is again sort of trying to plan this out a bit so the first stage would be right just transfer and that's kind of what I'm doing here just sort of get like a rough idea of like what what, what am I drawing? What's going on? Where is it, right? Where are these different things? Okay, so I'm going to have like a hand, something like that, and then we've got this other one, right? Uh, maybe like another kind of finger here, all right? And then we've got like this kind of finger, all right? And then, all right, thumb is kind of here something like that. So again, we just got to remember this is like, you know, this is a sketch. It doesn't have to be kind of perfect. And again, I like the idea of oh, things kind of coming out, doing something weird. Um, what else did we have under there? All right, so we had so again, that's mix of transfer, mix of structure, right? The second thing we, we would sort of do is sort of the drawing, right? Slash structure. Um, so again, this is where, similar to what I'm doing now, I'm thinking about like, you know, where, where is, how big is the little finger compared to the big finger, right? Like what is happening with this? Um, this finger here, right? Like what, what, what's, what's going on? Um, again, I, I feel like probably don't want that finger there. So this is, you know, a little bit more of that sort of technical stuff, right? Like where is the, I've got center um, here. Again, I sort of had a bit of that kind of neck sort of showing. Boom. Right, and if we sort of draw through and, and figure out where some of these things are now, that will kind of really, really help us later on, right? Because because I won't, then I can go over it. So, you know, get it, getting getting that stuff figured out now, I think, is super super useful. All right, and this. So here I've got again. Let's get hand, bump. One, two, three, four. Four fingers. Drawing a comic at the moment, and one of the one of the characters, one of these races in this comic, has three fingers, and it is forever tripping me up. Um, so I think what what will happen is I'll get used to it, and then I'll start drawing other people with like three fingers. Uh, it'd be super super weird. So again, what, what you'll kind of notice is that like the, the process of doing this versus, you know, just kind of me sketching away is, is very different, you know. Um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, what you're going to do is you're, you're going to get a little bit more of this draw through, right? I, I, I actually have a real sort of, you know, destination in mind and, and that affects everything, right? That, for, for me anyway, that affects my entire sort of the everything that happens with the drawing right like everything that everything that the whole feeling of it right everything is sort of changed by the fact that oh now I'm sort of you know trying to match something um, and again this is not necessarily like the best example of this right like this is not necessarily something where I'm like and look like the image is is you know way better 
um, because again, it, it is it's a little bit easier to come up with sort of super interesting ideas when we're just sort of in flow, not talking. Um, but again, just as an example. All right, so we're kind of there. Again, I feel like those hands are pretty big, but better for hands to be big than small. And here we've got, again, some hair. Well, let's, so I'm going to do a few things. I'm just going to put some of these kind of, right, sort of really technical kind of lines to make sure we line everything up. Again, I find it quite useful to put in these sort of big lines. So big eyes. Something like that. And the other thing I'm, oh, that looks weird. Not quite in the right spot. All right. Boom. Bom. So just trying to time this, make sure we're not going sort of crazy over time. And the other thing I'm going to do is get up out of the chair and just, uh, you know, make sure all of this stuff is kind of lining up. All right, so here I kind of notice, yeah, I feel like this chin could kind of come over here. A little bit more of that could move in that's kind of center, so I think we need to kind of go in here. And this could probably come out. Yeah, so that means again, we'll probably like move these. So again, this will look pretty rough until until we sort of do another pass on it, right? And that'll sort of happen pretty soon. So we can get rid of that. We can get rid of some of this. Let's make sure we put in this stuff. Bump. with those in a little bit. All right. So again, Betty Edwards drawing on the right side of the brain. I've talked about this in a, in a few other sort of uh, videos on the channel. Uh, I, I don't use those concepts at all for drawing from life, but, but the idea that again, we can sort of start to look at, right, like the negative space Right, like the negative space created by the ears, right? We start to sort of try and do some of those gymnastics mentally. It's those little things that really kind of help. So again, you know, uh, this is still that sort of drawing phase. I've, I've blocked stuff in. Um, I'm, I'm doing one last kind of check. And, and basically after this, uh, yeah, it's kind of like whatever happens, happens in terms of, you know, whether or not the, the drawing sort of looks good from a structural standpoint, right? When you're, when you're you know, dealing with sort of self-imposed deadlines or, again, the intent is not to, not to go crazy, then, yeah, really important to, to stick to that, right? Mm. Um, so again, totally made up hands, right? Not not trying to sort of reference or anything. So you know that th there's going to be limitations on you know how good they can be, etc. Well, All right, 
So again, that's probably that's probably all we can all we can do. And I think uh, again, one of the things I want to do is try and make it a little bit less, just a bit sort of angry at the moment, which doesn't feel very good. Um, see if we can play around with that. I feel like most of that will be there. But yeah, so again, you know, similar kind of process to, you know, how I would sort of normally, you know, block in a drawing. But, you know, I'm just sort of re referencing this, right? And again, one of the things you'll kind of notice is, you know, I've made her kind of eyes sort of open, right? Whereas in the in here, they were kind of like closed. So again, that's a change. You've got to be aware that that's going to sort of change the, the feeling of it somewhat. But yeah, let's, uh, again, I think we're done with that kind of, you know, basic sort of drawing block in. The next thing to do that I find, again, you know, and, and this is not, you know, it's not like there's any rules or anything like that. But the, the thing that I find really sort of useful is to is to then do a pass where we specifically focus on character, right? So I'm specifically saying, okay, all right, I've tried to get it sort of solid. As as we get it solid, one of the things we'll kind of notice is that we we kind of lose character. You know, we lose emotion, we lose drama, we lose a lot of stuff. So let's just focus on that for a minute. Other thing we need to do is sharpen that pencil. So again, what I might do is is take down some of this sort of graphite because again we're just doing sort of a little sort of sketch right and we'll just see if we can sort of take some of this down and then do a do a better drawing over the top again it can be useful to use that sort of rolling method right just sort of blast everything out of there see what we can do all right so now basically yeah what I'm gonna do is just see if I can make this interesting start with start with that kind of face now we're going to do the manga-esque we can still sort of see through the through the hair which I think is like the best invention ever in terms of drawing right just like who cares you can see through the hair because you can kind of see through hair right Again, trying not to be too structural with this. Again, context is everything. This is still just a little kind of 20, 30 minute sketch or something like that. Seeing what, you know, playing around. Might do a few of these as sort of warm up. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I do find that you know, if we kind of get the some of that kind of character working right with the with the main sort of face, then yeah, a lot of that other stuff will kind of will kind of fit into kind of slot into place. Sorry, don't. Yeah, and I find again like this uh, this black wing is kind of so dark on this paper that it really changes the the look of how um, again you know all of the the lines and things that I would normally make. It's 
because it sort of, uh, yeah, some of these lines kind of stop blending. They, they start blending together a lot better. Again, I feel like I feel like that's kind of working well, but again, it's a little bit looks like a little bit much. But you can see that again, you know, even if you sort of look at the, you know, that previous sketchbook um, that I sort of had, right, like this one um, that has, you know, like you know more. A lot of these are a little bit more sort of tonal, right? Um, yeah, and uh, again, you know, I think that's just like a response to, you know, whatever is is happening with the with the paper. Um, you know, this works. You know, this is not something I do when I'm sort of working digitally, but you know, I think it kind of works okay here. So again, here we'll try and see if we can. Make these kind of effects work a little bit in. In pencil, although again, like for me, I, I feel like. The major way that I would kind of see them. Coming into their own a little bit would be if we uh, colored it up. And that's another thing is, you know, you can do these as colors, right? You see a lot of those black sad sketches. Um, they, you know, have a, have a lot of, you know, color work that is, you know, a major part of the planning. And again, you know, that's also something you can, you can sort of do there. Bom. So yeah, you can sort of tell this is this type of image is not the type of image that I normally normally make. But again, um, you know, I find more and more that I'm doing a lot of kind of like bigger uh, headshots in in the, in the work that I'm doing. It's really important to be able to sort of sell that character um, up close. And what I found is, you know, because I was working in a much, you know, drawing a lot of scenes and things and concept where, you know, the character is sort of less important. Yeah, you know, I, I was kind of losing that to a certain degree, right? You know, I didn't didn't have a lot of that happening as, as much as I could. All right, again, got some earrings under here that are sort of getting lost, but I still want to kind of put them in. And here, again, we've got this kind of hand here. So again, I, I just kind of often jump around, right? You sort of see there's not a lot of right, not a lot of rhyme or reason to how or why I'm kind of doing it or you know, I'm just sort of messing around, right? And and I'm sort of trusting that this idea that I kinda of have in in the original kind of thumbnail, right? You can kind of see, right? Like maybe uh yeah, you know, maybe there's like a few more of these. add some sort of tonality to them. Um, again, these are things that, decisions that I would make depending on, you know, what kind of, what kind of medium I'm using. If I'm, if I'm planning to do these just digitally, I would, uh, you know, I'd leave everything open and clean line because I know that I'm going to come back and have the ability to kind of render it. But if I'm doing it here, then, you know, and I'm not going to take it any further, then, yeah, maybe it is important to, 
yeah, uh, you know, add a little bit more sort of shading or whatever. Boom. Alright, got that finger under there. Alright, that finger under there. And here again, I think. Alright, sort of got don't really need to draw much of that sort of neck there. This is coming over here. Alright, boom. Again, thinking about the, the, the most basic compositional rule that, that I find sort of useful, um, you know, the best value for money one that I found is just overlapping shapes. If you have one thing in front of another thing, it always kind of tells you that, hey, there's depth. Depth exists here. Yes, it's like a two-dimensional thing, but, uh, you know, there's depth here, and that's cool. Uh, and, and it, yeah, you know, it, it's often just the, the simplest dumbest things that kind of work, you know, all day, every day, right? Sort of every single time. And, uh, yeah, you know, trying to get too fancy with it. So often, you know, nothing really beats just simple overlapping shapes as a, as a rule that kind of will always create depth and visual interest. Time to sharpen that pencil again. Try not to do it all the way. So you can see here again, you know, like the the, the, the process, um, you know, that I kind of used to this. It, it got me to draw some some hands, right? Which again, I would normally not do from a sort of time, can't be bothered sort of point of view. So I think that's good. And uh, again, you know, just an example of how, uh, you know, can be good to think about what is what is good right so if you separate like what is an interesting idea right from what what can i be bothered drawing now right often you know we our sort of laziness gets you know gets in the way let's say um sometimes if you just do it yeah it can kind of can kind of turn out okay right Let's put one of these, another one of these blobs here. All right, that's coming up there. Let's erase some of that out. Again, so at this point, I'm I'm just kind of messing, messing around a little bit. Like, eh, it's probably like too similar. So a, I press too hard with that. It would be good to and just watch, watch that. Maybe if we can make that a slightly different shape, that would sort of be good. So just trying to think about placement of these things. Right. Uh, anyway, I forget what I was talking about before that. Is this is this is this ear in the right spot? That is the question. Oh, yeah, that's not a very good ear mirroring. But again, probably running out of time. Um, I think we're already sort of over the the half an hour sort of time that I was gonna sort of spend on this. So yeah, again, what I what I normally do. Um, other sort of, you know, really sort of simple thing that I've always found works is just kind of say, well, you know, if I, if, if I only had a few minutes, what would I do to kind of, you know, finish this off? So obviously there's some drawing that needs sort of doing down the bottom. But, yeah, if I just kind of think about, you know, putting in this stuff here. Again, just overlapping, overlapping here. Just 
just that sort of crazy, it's like that sort of Miyazaki uh, manga sort of hair magic thing, right? When, when like something sort of big happens, right? Hair kind of gets a bit crazy. I always like that as an idea. Again, we're often just kind of looking at ways to try and make something interesting, right? Like what tools do we have, right? It's the same as like capes on superheroes. Oh, now you can show they're moving. Same with hair. Um, you know, it's just one of these things that is always useful. And again, uh, I'm not going to have time to, you know, go through and, you know, spend the extra three hours that it would take to kind of sort out all these overlapping bits of hair and stuff. Again, still just a sketch. Um, and again, still a whole bunch of work to do that, uh, yeah, we're just not going to have time for, you know, to really take this to the next level. But it doesn't mean we can't. again, try and add and, and, and think about the illustration sort of nature of it, right? So, you know, where there might be some good shapes, right? Where we might have, again, do we want to sort of push these silhouettes at the top, maybe? Don't know. Um... So I think, yeah, one of the things I have mentioned on the channel before is, is just the idea of micro-composition. Micro-composition is where we're doing all the same things um, as, you know, you, you would be when you're drawing, you know, a proper full illustration. We're thinking about overlapping shapes, um, you know, how do I draw the eye, all those things, except we're just doing it over here, right? So all these little bits of hair where I'm like, well, what's overlapping what? We're making decisions when we're doing that, right? And one of the things that, again, really thinking about the frame here, right? Drawing within a frame, now that I've got a frame, um, and I kind of know, like, wh where are the boundaries of that? Where do I want to sort of put focus? Where is my hierarchy of detail, right? Where are all those things? If I kind of have that, then it allows me to practice that micro-composition, Right, it just allows me to sort of sit there and make decisions about like, well, what's in front of what? What looks good? What doesn't look good? Like, oh, that didn't work, right? So I'm I'm able to make mistakes very effectively, even though I'm just sketching. Um, and it's often those little there's those little sort of decisions that you're making that really kind of build your own sense of style, your own sense of sort of fluidity, your own sense of all these little things, right? Like how how do you overlap hair? Um, again, don't don't take a, a lesson from me. I, I would say, look look at someone like Loish. Um, <laughs> he's really really good at it. Um, not me, but but again, like you you, you practice doing these things, um, and, and it's often that sort of yeah very sort of subtle practice that you can only get by just sitting there making like a thousand silly decisions about how hair goes. That's how you learn, right? That there's there's no when you're when you're drawing you know like a forest and you've got like a million tr a million leaves to draw. You're not going to draw them all, but what you are going to do is figure out which ones to draw, right? At as an artist, you that's your job. Which ones do you draw? You can't do them all, but you can decide which ones to do, and you can practice, you know, like exactly how you're going to deal with that. Um, and again, that there's, there's no way you can make the decision consciously for how all those things go, right? It's just not possible. You can't sit there going like, well, this, you know, I'm going to use this compositional rule here, right? <laughs> and use this one here. It's just not going to be able to work. Uh, the only thing you can kind of do is just instinctively fill around and draw leaves, draw grass, draw rocks, draw these bits and pieces, right? Draw and shade and make all these little things like, would it be better to have the, like, should, you know, should there be tone on here? I don't know, right? Uh, like, what, what, what should this look like, right? Should the tone be on the top or on the bottom, right? Like, what, you know, who knows? I mean, th there's like, 
you know, there's literally a million different ways you could do that, right? Like an infinite number of ways you you can do that, right? There's no right answer there. All you're dealing with is kind of, you know, how are you going to do it today on this image? And I think all those things are done instinctively. And, um, yeah, I think that's why you just got to practice it. You just got to find some way, again, you know, similar to this where, you know, you, you're able to go in there and make mess around and make mistakes and, you know, again, draw a million leaves and figure out, you know, where do, where do they all go, right? Like, what's, what's sort of important? Uh, again, hopefully that makes sense, right? Like, hopefully that metaphor is not too sort of stretched, right? So, again, we've got this and here. Again, I like the trying to add some sort of textural quality to it. If this was digital, as I said before, probably what I'd do is just forget about, um, you know, I'd, I'd just kind of leave these shapes open and, and figure it out later. Because again, digital, I, that's just how I'm used to doing it, right? That's just kind of how my process works, right? I'm sort of very comfortable ideating in the digital space, Let, less so, you know, like this. I, I you know, I, I do very, very little of this type of thing, um, you know, from a from a time perspective, right? You know, I, I might spend 30 hours a week drawing in Photoshop, uh, you know, maybe three or four drawing traditionally. So, you know, you just get better at making decisions in particular kind of mediums, obviously. All right, so we're almost done with this. And again, um, ho hopefully this has been sort of interesting and worth it to take it. I was debating whether or not I should, you know, just kind of do this. Um, you know, in a separate video, but I thought making it all one is good. And uh, yeah, let me know if you've got any questions because I'll be doing some follow-ups. And again, I'm going to make another video um, that again, uh, will be, you'll be able to find on the channel uh, if I get around to it once it's done. If you're listening to this after this is released, like, you know, in a few weeks, uh, there'll probably be a link to it down below uh, in the description. But uh, that'll be about scenes, right? So again, how we do the same thing but with scenes, right, which is, uh, to me, again, a, a little bit easier to do because I've had more experience doing that, but I wanted to do this on uh, characters and, and simple things because I know that's, I, I, I think it, it that's the sort of thing that a lot of people are going to probably, uh, yeah, again, you, you might find that a little bit easier to get your sort of head around initially. But uh, yeah, I can't stress enough how important it is to practice all these little bits and pieces, um, you know, just in your sketchbook, right? Just in your sort of, you know, typical drawing practice, right? Like get, get good at thinking about all these ideas. And, you know, once you've done this, I, I think then you can sort of go and look at, um, again, creative illustration, uh, all those things that, uh, you know, any other sort of how to make picture book. If, if you've got suggestions for other how to make good picture illustration books, let, let me know. Um, uh, again, this hand here is looking a little bit, we're, we're lacking anatomy here, um, but that's all right, because again, it doesn't, it's just, just a sketch. So anyway, I think we're kind of pretty close to this, but yeah, let me know if you've got any uh, things you'd, you'd like to see in sort of future um, future episodes related to this type of work. Um, yeah, I think, uh, again, the bottom line is play around with this yourself, right? Uh, it can be rough going in the beginning, but don't worry. And I think, as I said in you know a recent sort of ritual video, right? Um, yeah, just sort of sketching draw with me session is that I think, you know, one of the things I realize is that because I've done this so much, it, it, it really is a case of where I have started to, you know, do most of my creative drawing in these little thumbnails, right? So that's really where I'm going to be, you know, doing the majority of the work is, um, you know, doing it at this little phase. And, and I kind of sometimes forget that. And when I come to sort of just draw around, I, I kind of realize that I'm not used to, just kind of 
drawing and flowing, uh, you know, like you sort of normally would, because I've just been, you know, so programmed to think of, you know, the more detailed drawing phase as something where we're executing a drawing, right? We're sort of oh, couldn't couldn't talk while I'm doing that. That required a lot of brain space. Um, again, see if we can do this one as well. Oh. Yeah, moving the diaphragm while talking will affect this. Um, and I have a whole video on drawing straight lines if you want to sort of check that out. Um, Anyway, I think uh, I think we're done with this particular sort of demo. Um, let me know if you've got any questions in the comments. Hopefully this one was sort of interesting. It's a tricky concept and, uh, you know, if I could sort of do it, uh, figure out a way to sort of, you know, explain how this kind of functions and, and the importance of it, I, I think I sort of would. But uh, hopefully this has given you an idea for kind of how I use these ideas. Um, so again, just to go over the basic sort of concepts, uh, you know, just sketch around, thumbnail out ideas, spend some time doing it. Uh, again, you know, I'll do a few more sessions where I spend a lot more time. The real sort of trick to going from sort of here to here is that, again, you know, I have a little bit of a staged process that I'm kind of always using in the background, although, again, I will switch between these as I need. But the first is just transfer, right? You saw me do that. Just get it down, right? Just get it on the page, kind of try and get everything where you sort of want it to be and, you know, see how you go. The second is focus on drawing and structure. So have a phase where you really are just like, okay, are these eyes lining up, right? Uh, have I lined them up still? I don't know. Uh, you know, like, are these ears lining up? All that kind of stuff. And the third thing that I kind of didn't write down here is, is sort of the character, right? Or story. And that's where, again, you know, I do a for uh, often the process of drawing and structure makes the character go away a little bit. So in that case, you know, I just consciously are trying to say, hey, let's get it back. Let's make this look cool. Let's try and, you know, get all those subtleties working. And, you know, almost, again, part of this is just saying, like, again, what is this illustration about? What's the focus? Let's get that working so I've got confidence that, um, you know, again, as we kind of work through this, that, uh, you know, it's going to work, right? We're going to come out somewhere uh, in the end and, and, and that somewhere is going to be interesting and, and, and worthwhile. Uh, and the fourth thing is, you know, just a lot of what I've been doing, right, is the refinement. And that's where, again, we just think about the, the micro compositional elements, right? We think about, you know, the subtle tonality, um, you know, just sort of, adding little bits and pieces basically and and trying to make it look good right trying to think about all those other little tiny bits and pieces and uh, again you know the the main trick is just you know don't worry too much about character and story until you got it blocked in until you transferred it until you've done some initial structure because you don't want to sort of get the eye just right and then realize it's not in the right spot let's say and you don't want to worry about again refining and doing some cool stuff and then realize you need to erase it. So a lot of this process stuff is pretty basic. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one. Uh, let me know if you've got any thoughts in the comments, uh, things we can sort of work on, etc., etc. But uh, yeah, other than that, we'll catch you around. Happy drawing. Just missed a bit there. I think that looks better. And another bit there. Yeah, the refinement process can take a while.